Foods here on YouTube is known for his crazy barbecue experiments. So it's no surprise to me that he made a video where he cooked an entire brisket inside of a microwave. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with brisket, the average brisket is about 15 pounds and some briskets are even over 20 pounds. So this is a massive piece of beef. And briskets are best cooked when they're smoked at low temperatures for a long period of time. While microwaves struggle to make cold pizza and french fries edible, so if you do the math, this seems like a recipe for disaster. But as crazy as this experiment seems, we can learn some valuable information that can help us with our own cooking at home. Because Guga's videos are like barbecue bedtime stories. There's always a lesson to be learned at the end. But before we get there, let's watch this video together. And everything starts off with this beautiful brisket. It is a 12 pounds beast. Okay, so it's 12 pounds. Still, that's pretty big. And as you can see, it's a full packer. That's because it includes both muscles, the flat and the point. So the flat muscle is the leaner part of the brisket and the point muscle is the fattier part, which if you cook it correctly, it will just melt in your mouth. And these two muscles are separated by a bunch of fat and connective tissues. You can actually see both the muscles and the connective tissues when you slice the brisket in half for that textbook YouTube money shot. The hardest part about cooking a full pack of brisket like Guga has here is cooking both parts of the brisket well, meaning you want both parts not to be over or undercooked. So I'm having some serious doubts that the microwave is going to be able to pull this off. The point is everybody's favorite because it has the most amount of fat. So for that reason, I like to take all of the external fat out. However, the flat, since it's a lot leaner, I like to leave a quarter inch. Once I was done with the trimming, this is what it looks like. So this is a very different style of trimming than I'm used to with Texas style barbecue because with Texas style, you basically keep the whole fat cap intact and you just reduce it down to a quarter of an inch. This is more like a competition style barbecue trim. And I believe they trim this way because they are under a time crunch. So they have to cook their briskets hot and fast. And with a hot and fast brisket, you don't have enough time to render all the fat on the fat cap. Personally, unlike Guga here, I like to keep the fat cap on top of the point side because even though the point is fatty, like Guga saying, a well-rendered fat cap will absolutely take the point to a whole nother level in terms of flavor. But at the same time, Guga is cooking this brisket in a microwave and it doesn't get much faster or hotter than a microwave. So based on that logic, it makes sense that he removed the fat cap. Now, in order to give this brisket a chance of becoming good after it's cooked in the microwave, we gotta do something that it's called dry brine. So Guga goes on to say that dry brining the meat is basically putting salt on it and letting that salt set for at least overnight. Basically by dry brining, the salt draws the moisture out of the meat and then the salt and that moisture that it just pulled reabsorbs deeply into the meat. And as a result, the meat is more juicy, tender, and flavorful. It also has has the added benefit of drying out the surface of the meat, which can help form the bark or crust of whatever meat you're cooking. For long barbecue cooks, I don't think dry brining really does anything. Because if you're cooking, let's say a brisket or a pork butt, it's gonna take like eight to 12 hours. And over that time period, the salt has enough time to penetrate the meat and give you all of the benefits of dry brining that I just explained. But again, Guga's cooking this brisket in a microwave. So it's gonna be done cooking in like an hour. So. I think dry brining here is a great idea. If there's one thing I like on my brisket, it's also pepper. I don't like too much or too little. This amount right here is good enough for me. So Guga goes Texas style here with just salt and pepper, but personally, I think he should have went heavier with the spices. Salt and pepper works so well with brisket because when you barbecue it, you get that added flavor of smoke. And when I barbecue brisket for my own personal taste, I like to add on a little extra, like some beef rub or some Lowry seasoning on top of salt and pepper. Well, unfortunately, and obviously you're not gonna get any smoke in a microwave. So my guess is that this brisket is gonna be pretty bland. Now, if this was me microwaving the brisket, I would have used like an umami rub because the savoriness and boldness can kind of make up for the lack of smoke flavor. But with that said, the sugars and other ingredients inside of a complex rub might actually burn if you cook it at full power in the microwave, especially if you're doing it for a long period of time. So maybe Google went salt and pepper because he didn't wanna have to adjust the power levels of the microwave and extend the cook time. Now that I got my brisket fully seasoned, the only thing left to do is to cook it. And for that, I need a special container because we're gonna be putting this in the microwave. <laughs> the way he was talking, I thought he was gonna bring out like the Briskinator 9000, but then he just brings out a giant Rubbermaid container. <laughs> 
So Google puts the brisket into the microwave in 15 minute increments until it's done. And while that's cooking, I think it'll be helpful to talk about how microwaves work so we can understand exactly what's happening to this brisket here. So full transparency here, I have no clue how microwaves work. I put the cold pizza in, I push a button, the hot pizza comes out. That is the extent of my knowledge. But luckily we live in the 21st century where the internet is a thing. So to help me explain the complex subject of microwave engineering, I watched a video called How a microwave oven works from the engineer guy YouTube channel. And I will have a link to his full video in the description for those of you who are interested, because first of all, I'm a barbecue guy, not an engineer. And the last physics class I took was like 15 years ago in my freshman year of college. So a lot of the things that the engineer guy explained went way over my head. But I did get two helpful microwave facts that'll help us understand what is happening to Google's brisket. So the first thing I learned is that microwaves cook things from the inside out. Now there's a lot more to this explanation with magnetrons and microwaves and radiation and a bunch of other stuff I don't understand. So again, link in the description if you wanna know more. But anyways, this is important information because it is widely accepted that the best way to cook a brisket is on an offset smoker. So an offset smoker works by the draw effect. Basically the fire in the firebox draws air from the outside and the smoke it creates travels through the cook chamber and out the smokestack because of air buoyancy. And this hot smoke travels over the food, cooking it via convection. And unlike microwaves, which cooks things from the inside out, convection cooking cooks things from the outside in. Meaning if an offset is the best way to cook a brisket, then a microwave is the absolute worst way to cook a brisket. The second piece of helpful information is that microwaves cook in waves. And these waves do not cook evenly as demonstrated by the engineer guy with his platter of ramen noodles. Now this uneven cooking is somewhat fixed by modern microwaves because they have a glass plate that rotates while the food is cooking. However, Guga's container is just too big to make that rotation. So it just ends up getting stuck against the door of the microwave. So it's very likely that he's gonna get a lot of burn spots on his brisket once it's done. But anyways, now that we have all of that covered, let's go ahead and see how Google's brisket turned out. And as I remove from the microwave, these are the results. Take a look at this. Let me remind you that this was done in a microwave for exactly 49 minutes. It even has a nice golden brown color and a little bit of bark. So although that does look like bark, my guess is like I explained earlier that those are just the burn marks from the microwaves just blasting the brisket in the same spot for 50 minutes. Okay, so we see a lot of juice coming out of the brisket and this is a good sign because it shows that it's most likely not overcooked. Okay, let's get a look at the cross section. Wow, that actually looks better than like 90% of the briskets I see on TikTok. Ooh. The fat cap on the lean side looks pretty hard, almost like crispy bacon fat, but Honestly, this brisket does not look bad. Wow, that is really interesting. All right, everybody, here we have our insane brisket. Is that juicy or what? So here's the deal. I wanna know your most crucial, honest opinion on this one. But I didn't do it anyway. I just licked my finger. And my finger tastes good. Oh man, Google, I feel your pain there, man. That is the face of defeat right there. I've cooked so many briskets in the rain, in the snow, in the unbearable heat and had to stay up for insane hours to get the cook done. And then Google puts a brisket in a microwave for an hour and it actually tastes good. <laughs> That's pain, man. <laughs> Cheers. Tastes like a brisket. It doesn't taste bad. Tastes pretty good. It is a little too. So I did expect that this brisket was going to be chewy, even though it looked really nice and juicy on those close up shots. Because when meat cooks, the proteins are broken down and then bind up, releasing water and juice, which is why you rest meat so that the proteins can relax and retain more moisture and not end up being spilled all over the cutting board. But because this specific brisket was cooking from the inside out, by the time the outer crust of the brisket was finished, the proteins in the center of the brisket would be so bound up and overcooked that no matter how long you rest it, they just wouldn't be able to relax. Which is why I think there was so much juice coming out of the brisket when Google was slicing it and also why it was so chewy when they were eating it. <laughs> I mean, if I buy this at a restaurant, yeah, it tastes like a restaurant's 
like it tastes like a restaurant brisk i'm about to cry right now so if there was ever an opinion that i would take as fact when it comes to the taste of beef it would have to be Google and Angel because they eat Wagyu, dry aged ribeyes, and a bunch of crazy cuts of meat that you and I can't even imagine trying. And this leads us directly into the moral of the story. If someone tries to gatekeep you from barbecue telling you you can't make a real brisket if you use a pellet smoker or a Weber kettle or even your oven at home, just tell them that if a microwave can cook a restaurant grade brisket, then your brisket will be more than fine. But as educational as that is, nothing beats learning from the best. So if you wanna take a deep dive with me as I give my insights on Alvin Joe's documentary on the number one barbecue spot in Texas, Goldie's Barbecue, then make sure to watch the next video on your screen and I'll catch you guys over there.